Hey everybody, it's Derek, and welcome to 365.training presents 10-minute video tips, where we provide tips, tricks, and video-based instruction on the Power Platform and Dynamics 365 features and functionality in 10 minutes or less. In this video, we're going to look at the process for embedding a Canvas app inside a model-driven app. Now, the advantage to embedding Canvas apps inside model apps is really the fact that you can take full advantage of what a Canvas app does. A Canvas app can connect to multiple data sources that are not CDS-driven, where a model app only can connect to CDS data sources. So now you have the ability to have a more kind of visually dynamic area that's added to a specific model-driven form that allows you to work with, you know, maybe SharePoint information or third-party information or a custom connector that you're utilizing from a Canvas app perspective. The other advantage to being able to embed Canvas apps inside the application is now within the context of this Canvas app, you can also interact with the model-driven app. I have the ability to go in and, you know, open specific records and I have the ability to go ahead and create new records using and access a lot of the model-driven functionality that's available. So currently you're going to do embedded Canvas apps using the old form customization interface uh, for CDS. And so you will have to go in, open up your form, and then do the switch to classic mode. And what that's going to do is that's going to enable the capabilities for you to be able to leverage the custom control that, that's backending this particular situation. Now the way that the form or the way that the, the model Canvas app it works is it needs to be tied to a specific field. So in a lot of situations, what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and try to just create a section. And in that section, you're going to want to expose a field that is going to have kind of unique information or be able to identify that particular record. So for example, if I was doing a situation where I was going in and doing property information for real estate properties, I would likely want to use the property name field or some type of field that's going to be able to uniquely identify that. So in this situation, I was able to take the property name field and add it into the form into the section. Now, the way that this works is it uses the, the, the controls. And so if I go over to controls, you'll see that there's an option here to add a Canvas app to the application. When I go ahead and click on add Canvas app, what it's going to do is it's going to bring in a configuration standpoint. So the first time that you do this, you won't necessarily see the app name or the app ID. You will need to create a new app and that actually goes out and creates a custom connection to the application or to this particular entity. So it actually uses this custom entity data set basically or creates a custom connector to this particular item. So once you hit customize, what it's going to do is it's going to create a brand new app. This app will then be backended by Dynamics 365 and filtered based upon the entity that you selected and the item that you worked with. So in this particular case, it's going to be backended or supported from a real estate app or from a real estate properties perspective. So one of the things that you'll see here is I now have my model driven form integration. What this particular situation then does is this is tied to the individual entity. Once this app or this connection is made, now it's a fully functional Canvas app. Now I have all the same capabilities that I would normally have. I could connect to an external data source if I wanted to. I could build galleries. I could build, you know, individual forms. I have all of the same components. So in this situation, I just created some galleries that display uh, individual similar properties in order to work with the item that you're going through. So once the item has been created, now you can start working through the individual situations. Now I'm going to switch back here real quick. So when you first come in, one of the things to keep in mind is you have read only access to the entity that you're working with. And so in this situation, what you're actually seeing is you're seeing the data set based upon the entity that you're working with. So since this might be tied to account, or in my case, it was tied to a specific real estate property, I would have full access to be able to pull information from the model driven form integration to be able to work with it. Now, 
as you're going through, you only have read access to the hosting form. So if you want to be able to go out and do, you know, specific information related to that data, you will have to utilize the data set and actually pull the account or whatever entity in that you want to work with to be able to facilitate working with that item. As you're working through, you also have the ability to be able to interact with related data. Now, the way that this information has set up, the traditional methods that you might use in order to be able to facilitate some of that, particularly from a related perspective, doesn't necessarily work. So I can't necessarily go into the model-driven form integration and pull in your specific item uh, item and then grab the full name for the contact entity. You do have to do lookup scenarios. So I would actually have to do a lookup on the account scenario where the account GUID is pulling from the model driven form integration, pulls the, I, the item ID that matches the primary contact's full name. So you do have to do lookup scenarios in order to facilitate and find specifically what item you want to work with. Now, as I mentioned, the advantage to this is obviously I have the capabilities to be able to go out and, you know, connect to SharePoint, connect to other data sources within my app, but also one of the key advantages to being able to utilize this scenario is the fact that I can work with the hosting form on the model driven app. So built into this form scenario, I actually have different controls, one for navigating to main form, navigating to views, quick creates, refreshing and interacting with capabilities. Depending upon what you want to do, you can utilize that information accordingly. So for example, here I have a situation where I'm actually displaying related contacts inside the item. If I wanted to be able to navigate to the contact entity or the item that I'm working with, this is where I can actually reference the model driven form integration, use the navigate to main form, and then I just have to specify what entity I want to work with. So in this situation, I obviously want to work with a contact entity. So I'm going to throw the contact entity in there as text. And then I'm also going to use the contact form that I want to reference. So if you're working with like out of the box scenarios, obviously the contact entity is called contact and the contact form is called contact. If this was a custom entity or a custom form, you would have to use the form name that you designated, but you can use the true proper form name. You don't necessarily have to use schema names. Then you just have to identify where the ID is of the record that you want to open. So in this case, I specify that I want to use the contacts gallery and whatever contact is selected in that contacts gallery. And now it will automatically surface that information and move me the model driven application directly to the corresponding record. Same thing if I wanted to do quick create. So in this situation, I just have to specify what entity I want to work with. So I specify I want to work with a contact entity and it opens a quick create form. They add that to a button or to a hyperlink on the Canvas app and I am now interacting specifically with that particular item. And if I wanted to, I could also come into here and I could use, you know, a view where I specify the item that I'm working with. Again, you're using proper names. If you're working with out of the box entities, it's pretty straightforward. But at the same point in time, if you're working with like, for example, custom entities. So in this situation here, you'll notice that I actually have like a view all properties. In this situation here, I do have to use the schema name with the prefix. So if you created this through a solution, and you're going through and referencing custom entities, you do need to use the prefix information. I can still use the proper name. So I've created a view called active real estate properties. I can still reference that, but I do need to make sure that I'm going in and referencing the appropriate schema name on custom entities only. Otherwise you can use the regular information that you want to work with. So that's going to do it for our look at how to embed a Canvas app inside a model-driven app. I hope you found it informational. Uh, keep in mind that we're constantly adding new courses to 365.training, so go ahead and check us out there. But for all of us here at 365.training, this is Derek saying thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.